Okay, hey, math friends, so our learning target today is the rational number unit review. So everything we've done in the unit will be in this video, just a quick kind of taste of everything. Uh, so it'll be a lengthy video because we're covering everything, getting these ready for our unit test. So first learning, tar learning target that we did back in lesson 3.1 was I can identify rational versus irrational. So we learned that rational numbers are anything that can be written in the form of a quotient a over b. And then they say where b can't be equal to zero, but we won't talk about the logistics of that. So I broke it down to you as identify the irrationals first because they tend to be a little easier to identify. So that's icky square roots. So things that are rectangle and pi. So basically they are icky decimals. So decimals that fill up the entire calculator screen no pattern doesn't stop. So I would highly recommend that you go through this list and find the irrationals first, the ir icky rectangles and pi, the icky decimals, and then everything else by default has to be rational. The very first thing I would recommend that you do is find the square roots. So for example, and this is just a strategy, but take a look at this square root. That was supposed to be a different color. Is that a rectangle? 21. Can you make a square out of 21? Well, the factors are 1 times 21, 3 times 7. Are either of those squares, any of those factors squares? No. So this would be irrational because we cannot make a square out of 21. It would be a rectangle. And if we put that in our calculator, we would get a non-repeating, non-terminating decimal, a really icky decimal that fills up the entire calculator screen. I, as I said, I would go find all of the square roots first. It looks like, let's take a look at this one. Square root of 81. Can we make a square out of 81? Are there any factors that would give us a square? Yes, nine times nine. So the square root of 81 equals nine. And so that would be considered rational because it's a square, not a rectangle. Searching any other square roots? No. The only other thing, so I've taken care of all checking out all the square roots and checking to see does it make a rectangle or a square. After I've done that, go look for pi, anything with a pi in it, right here. That would be irrational. Any other things with pi? No. Any other things that have these super long decimals? Do we see super, super long decimals? No pattern. No. There's a decimal. We have decimals, but none that have super long, no pattern. So, then what's left, and I wish I wouldn't have used those highlighters, but I did. What's left then would be this first decimal, which would be rational because we could convert to a fraction. This would be rational because we can convert to a fraction. It's a repeating decimal, which are really nice ones. We said this one is irrational. This would be rational because it's a fraction. This would be one half, which is rational. And this would be rational. So the final, final answer to each of these, rational, rational, they make fractions, irrational, that was a rectangle, rational, that makes a fraction, rational, that makes a fraction, irrational, because it's pi, icky, icky decimal, rational, that's a fraction, rational, that's a mixed number that can be converted to a fraction. That was your first learning target of the unit. Boom. I think I'm going the wrong way. I can order rational and rational numbers on a number line. So the first step here would be to convert these to mixed numbers. So we talk about seven thirds. How many threes go into seven? Well, two. Three and three make six. That means we have a remainder one third. So two and one third. I'll wait to plot those on the number line. I'll call that A to see if there's anything else that's close in proximity. If you need to pause the video right now so you have a chance to write all of those terms down, please do so. All right, next example. It would be negative, and 2 goes into 5 2 times, remainder 1 half. A negative 2 and 1 half. We will call that B. Next one, we'll call that C. <laughs> it's 0. That's a beauty. The next one, we will call that D. That's just in the integer negative 2. Ooh, the next one is exciting. That's a triangle problem. That's just division, which is negative three. Whoops. We will call that E. 
And finally, that's a nice decimal for us. We will call that F. So let's start to plot. A, 2 and 1 third. So A, 2 and 1 half sits here. So 2 and 1 third would be about right there. A, probably should have done that, done that in the same color green that was given. B is in red, negative 2 and 1 half. So negative 2 and a half would be here, which is B. Okay, C is located at 0. So here's my C. D is located at negative 2. So D is located at negative 2. E is located at negative 3. F is located at negative $3.25, so more negative. More negative. So F is way over here. Whoops. F is way over here. So there's your final, final order, the rational numbers. F is at negative $3.25. E, E, D, C, and A. Pause, pause, pause if needed. Go back if needed. Make sure you're comfortable with converting from a fraction to a mixed number or a decimal. Moving on. Next learning target. I can add and subtract fractions with negatives. So my reminder here that you need to have a common denominator to do that. So we're looking for a factor that goes into 2 that also goes into 14. We're going to use 14. So this left side looking good, looking good. Drag it down. I'm going to drag the sign down. Cool. And to convert this to a 14, I'm going to multiply by 7. There's my 14. Cool. Rule of math says whatever you do to the bottom, you have to do the top. So we're going to copy, paste, copy, paste. So that becomes 7. Now, I do have a common denominator. It's 14. Pause the video if needed. Pause it, pause it, pause it. That's negative 3 and a negative 7. Negative 3 and a negative 7 is a negative 10 kids on team negative. Tug of war. Reduce. Keep the negative, divide the top by 2 and the bottom by 2, gives us negative 5 sevenths. Final, final, negative 5 sevenths. Those are both prime numbers, so we know that we are in lowest terms. If that's too fast, you just have to press play. I often hear, hear kids say, it's just too fast. You just have to push pause, otherwise the video will be about three hours long if I pause all the time. Okay. Next problem, common, common, common denominator. What's a... What is a number that 3 and 4 go into? Well, the only option really is 3 times 4. There it is, common denominator. So working for that common denominator there, we're going to multiply this by 4. Copy, paste, copy, paste. There's my 12. Multiply by the top is 8. Drag the sign down. Cool, cool, cool. Multiply by 3 here. There's my 12. Mm, copy, paste, copy, paste. Slow down, check it out. Now, this one's very much related to elementary math when you found common denominators, maybe fourth, fifth grade. Um, so that's the good news on this one is that it's not any new negative stuff. So that's exciting, actually, for you. Common denominator is 12, and we're just subtracting the numerators. You still could tug a war it. Either way, it's just 8 minus 3, which is 5. Or you could put them on benches, and you're still going to get 5. 5 is prime. So we're in lowest terms. Final, final for add, subtract fractions with negative. Cool. Next learning target, I can say add, subtract mixed numbers with negative. All right, here we go. Reminder, converting. We're going to keep the negative out of the game and reattach it. So this is 18 multiply. What do we do with the numerator? Do you remember? Uh-huh. Yep. Add. So that's 19 thirds, cool. Ooh, we already have a common denominator. That's so exciting. Drag down, drag down, drag down. Drag down, drag down, drag, drag down. Cool. That one's already in fraction form for us. Sweet. Common denominator is three, boom. Cool, we're gonna tug aware of those numerators. Negative 19, plus what? Plus 20, boom. Who is stronger? Positive. How many extra players? One, one third, lowest term. That's our final, final on that problem. That one was awesome because it already had a common denominator. I love that. This next one, though, not so much, not so much gonna love it. 
that negative is going to get reattached. So we're going to multiply here, which is 40. We're going to add the numerator, which is 43. Over what? Over 4. Drag it down the sign. Cool. We're going to multiply here, which is 35. We're going to add the numerator, which is 39 fifths. Cool and pause. So now, catch up, catch up, catch up, catch up. Push pause if needed. Common denominator for 4 and 5. The super big bummer of that is I think we just have to multiply. It's going to have to be 20. Copy, paste, copy, paste. So there's my 20. Cool. I'm going to use my calculator on that 5 multiply by negative 43. Make sure you're multiplying up there, not subtracting. 5 times negative 43, y'all. Get negative 215. Check, check, check it out. Sign is here. Oops, I forgot to multiply, didn't I? Multiply by 4. There's my 20. There's my 20. So multiply by 4. And I've already identified the sign here, so I did not attach it to the 39. I've already pulled it down, so I'm not going to use it through multiplication. 39 times 4 is 156. Sweet! All right, all right, all right. Now, I'll go over the numerator. Negative 215, yep. And negative 156. All of those on the same team. Lots and lots of negatives there. What does that come out to be? 371. I did that in my head. Double, 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 double check. Let me see. Did I do that right? Did I do that right? Yes, I did. Sweet. Good job, Volkman. Division with negative is going to be negative, right? Because there isn't anything on the bottom there. I better erase that because you might think that's a positive. So it's a negative. And how many 20s go into 371? How many 20s go in there? So 20, 40, 60, how many? I think it's 18. Let me double, double check because that would be 18. What is it, 18? Yeah, that would be 360. 18 20s is 360, so the remainder on that would be how many left over would be 11 more, 11 20s. That's kind of back to elementary math when you're converting from mixed number to improper over and over. 11 is prime, so that's our final final. So some of these skills are from elementary school kind of coming back now. If you hated fractions back then, they're kind of coming back to haunt you on improper fraction, mixed number, things like that. All right. Moving on to something that seems a little more easy. Uh, most kids prefer this is what I was trying to say. Multiply, divide fractions and mix number, mixed numbers with negatives. So I, on the left here, I have one a division with fractions. And on the right, I have um, a mixed number in there. So if it's division, just remember you have to flip it, right? So we're going to leave the first fraction alone. We're going to change the multiplication by the reciprocal we flipped. Now, the cool part about this, looks like I didn't put any multiplication ones in there. That's a bummer. The cool part about this is then we don't need a common denominator. We multiply the top, multiply the bottom, put in lowest terms. So that reduces to negative 24, triangle problem, over what? 21. Okay. I'm actually going to reduce these right away. So that's divide that by 3 is negative 8. Divide that by 3 is 7. You could you could uh, convert it and then reduce either way. It's going to be negative, and 7 goes into 8 one time with 1 as the remainder. Negative 1 and 1 7. Final, final answer there because 1 is not going to reduce. Notice back to the very first step, we had to flip this fraction because of the division sign. Only division. Don't flip on multiplication. I, and unfortunately, I don't think I gave you any multiplication ones, although you did multiply right here, but just not right out of the gate. Next problem, reminder, negative weights out front, convert. That's 7 when we multiply, plus what? Plus the numerator is 5 is 12 sevenths, reattach negative. Now I'm going to rewrite this. Divide, I have, notice I haven't flipped it yet. 6 over what? 6 over 1, yeah. I haven't, I haven't flipped it yet because I'm still in division operation. So we're going to keep the first fraction alone. Cool. 
we're going to change to multiplication by the what? The reciprocal. Flip, 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 flip. Do it. Cool. Now, I could take a shortcut here. I see some cross factors, but I'll take the long way. Multiply the tops. Because I've flipped it. I've gotten it to multiplication now. I got it out of division. Multiply the bottoms. If I multiply the tops, it's negative 12. And if I multiply the bottoms, it's 42. Now, both of those can be divided by 2. You might also see 6 is in there, but I'm not going to go that fast. That I'll go baby steps here. So that's negative 6 over 21. Divide each by 2. And then we can pull a 3 out of 6. And we can also pull a 3 out of 21. So now I'm going to divide by 3, which is negative 2 when I divide by 3. Divide by 3 here, which is 7. So negative 2, 7. Both prime numbers, final, final, lowest terms. Oh, I hope I put the multiplication ones in there. But, I mean, there is multiplication happening here and here. So you, do, you are practicing this skill. Just make sure you don't flip when it's multiplication, only division. Ugh. Nope, I guess I didn't. Next learning target, I can evaluate expressions with decimals. I did allow you in this lesson to use your calculator because there's kind of some yucky stuff. So take the letters out, put the numbers in. So it's 5 times x times y over z plus y. Make parentheses. Do it, do it, do it, do it. Make parentheses. Make, make parentheses. Make parentheses. Make, make parentheses. Aren't they just the best? Oh, is that a no? All right, x is what? Negative 1. Put it in. Notice it's multiply up here. y is what? Negative 0 0.8. Put it in, put it in, put it in. z, what is it? 0 0.6. Put it in, put it in. y is what? Put it in, put it in, put it in. Cool. Now, multiply the numerators. 5 times negative 1 times negative 0.8 is 4. Nice. The denominators. Add them. Do it, do it, do it. Is negative 0 0.2. Final then would be 4 divided by negative 0.2 is negative 20. Notice how that got bigger because we're dividing by something so small. We can talk about that in a later part of math, but there it is. Evaluate, take the letters out, put the numbers in. And I'm being super, super nice to you about letting you use your calculator for all those yucky decimal sets. Next problem, write it out with parentheses. So that's 2.5 times y. I'm out of room there, so I'm kind of writing down the page. Minus 0.7 times y plus 6.4. Not the greatest on my teaching standpoint there. I'm just completely out of space. So substitute, negative 2 goes in, that's a multiply here. Negative 2 goes in, that's a multiply here. And then that's it, it goes in twice. All right. So I'm going to type all that in my calculator. Make sure you're using the parentheses when you're typing in your calculator. If you are, if you're solving by hand, that's amazing. My final final there is negative 6.2. Now I'm going to verify that that's correct. So I'm going to type it in again. Yes, boom, negative 6.2. Evaluate expressions with decimals. Get the letters out, get the numbers in. Next learning target, order of operations with negatives. Here we go. Reminder, these are absolute value bars. They mean how far away from zero, but they function as a grouping symbol. So they take first place along with the parentheses and the square roots. As stated, this is also in first place with the parentheses. But because they're tied, we work left to right. Here we go. On the inside of here, we tug a war that. How many players on each team? There would be 14 players on team negative. No positives there. How far away from zero is this? It's 14. Ooh, that one worked out nice. This problem here, take the square root of all that stuff. Multiplication happens first on the inside. That's a triangle problem. That's negative 15 plus 40. Step one. Cool. 
drag it down, drag it down. Now we're going to tug of war this. What happens when we tug of war those two numbers? Who's stronger? Positive. How many extra players? Well, 15 on the negative team, 40 on the positive team means 25 extra players. Now we take the square root of that, so we get 5. So 14 plus 5, ooh, two nice positive integers there. That was a beaut. That was a beaut problem is 19. Boom, done. Love it. Next problem. Multiplication here. That's a triangle problem. We recognize this is division, but we can't divide yet. We got to clean it up first, which is negative 35 on the top from the triangle. On the bottom, that's a tug of war. Who's stronger? Negative. How many extra players? Five, because it says tug of war. Now we triangle this, we get positive, and we get seven. Positive seven. Order of operations. All right, here we go. I can determine if a so if the value is a solution. This is a review standard, but still covering it. Plug nine in for x. Check. Does the left side equal the right side? Here we go. Negative two. Does this equal three minus five? Is it true that negative two, the left side equals the right side? Is that true? Yes. So we know that nine is the correct solution for x. Same plan down here, negative four is the solution. Negative three times negative four minus four equals negative 16. Does the left side equal the right side? That's positive 12 minus four, does that equal negative 16? Does eight equal negative 16? Uh, no. This is not, not the solution, not the solution to X. So you know you have it wrong then. Don't turn your test in then. Fix it. Go find your mistake. All right. Here we go. Solve two-step equations. Yay! Now we did this in the last unit, right? But we didn't have any decimals or fractions in it. So we kind of beefed it up a little bit. We've, it's like kind of spicy now. All right. Clean the yard, clean the yard. Build house, build fence, clean yard, clean yard. Go opposite on this. We go add, cool, cool, cool. Do it, do it, do it, do it. Then if I haven't used it, drag it down, drag it down, boom. So whip. And on the right-hand side, I'm going to use my calculator. A little secret right now. Uh-huh. Negative 30.2 plus 12.08. I really needed some help on that. I could not could not think about having to borrow and stuff. It's so scary. All right, our job is to isolate, find the value of M. That's what our goal is, right? When we are using inverse operations, when we build house, build fence, we're trying to isolate the variable. This is division right here. How do we undo? We multiply nice and high, copy, paste, copy, paste. Make sure you're multiplying to both sides. Multiply, multiply. Those cancel, that's exciting. And on the right-hand side, I'm pretty flexible with rounding. Um, we'll say right now, let's go to the nearest hundredth. So the negative is going to be our uh, sign, and it's 97.848. That's what it, my calculator says right now. It's a terminating decimal. If I approximate that to the hundredth place, I would cut this off right here, and I'd have to round up, which would give me negative 97.85. Now we did talk a bunch that if we plug this back in for M, the rounding is not, or when we go to estimate the left side equal the right side, it's not gonna be perfect because of rounding. So just remember that round, once we round, we lose the perfect. So that's why we use these squigglies to represent approximately equal to. All right. Build house, build fence, clean yard, clean yard. Do it, do it, do it. Build house, build fence, clean yard, clean yard. We're going to subtract 6.4, copy, paste, copy, paste. Cool. If I haven't used it, drag it down, drag it down. So that's negative 4.8x 
equals negative 8.48 minus 6.4 is negative 14.88. Divide both sides by negative 4.8 and we get x equals 3.1. Now that's a nice terminating decimal so to plug that one back in wouldn't be that big of a deal because we should get that the left side perfectly equals the right side. I'm going to skip the checking now so we can keep plugging away from the video, but make sure you're doing that. That's your responsibility. Solve equations with fractions. Oh boy. All right, here we go. I'm a kill denominator first kind of person. I like to get rid of those denominators. I like to have just integers in there. All right. So first thing is I recognize that there is one fraction sitting right here. So I'm going to get rid of this for a minute and clean up what I can before I even have to deal with the fraction. You could get rid of it, right? you could um, multiply through right away, but I don't think it's necessary on this particular problem. All right, well now I'm just left with this one fraction. I am going to kill that denominator right now through multiplication. Copy, paste, copy, paste. Make sure you're multiplying on the left. I ran out of room there, so it might look to you like 4 minus 3, but that's not true. It's multiply. So it's negative 12. This is still in the game here. So we're going to drag it down, drag it down. Ooh, this is a beaut. I like this problem. Divide both sides by 3. Cool. We get h equals what? What does this become? Negative 4. That wasn't bad at all. Plug it in, plug it in. Cool. So plug negative 4 in for h. Double, 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 double check. You can use your calculator on the check step. Make sure. All right, y'all, next problem, yuck. All right, so this problem here, you could use the reciprocal method, you could use the decimal me method. One thing I'm noticing just looking at this problem, just being a math teacher, I recognize you're gonna have some repeating decimals in there if you go decimal. So I'm not going to. I'm gonna use a uh, kill denominator method or what we call defraction. So here's my two denominators. I would start by pulling the biggest one out. And we send it into every single thing. Oh, this one's going to be beautiful. I love it so much. All right, here we go. 15 times 4. What's 15 times 4? It's 60. Okay. And then type, so go 15 times 4 in your calculator. Do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. And then I want you to divide by 15. And what'd you get? You might even notice a pattern there. You get 4. Ah! That's awesome. That's what's called defraction. This one's so awesome. It's going to happen again for us right now. I'm so excited. What's 15 times 2? Type it in. 15 times 2. Type it in. 15 times 2 is what? It's 30. Uh-huh. And then divide by 6. What'd you get? 15 times 2 is 30. 30 divided by 6 is 5. Now, that doesn't always happen. We sometimes still have a fraction left. And then 15 times 5 is 75. Oh my gosh. Thank you. We, we did what's called kill denominator or the defraction. I love it. No more fractions. Build house, build fence, clean yard, clean yard. We get 4x equals 70. Okay. Then we're going to divide both sides by 4. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And we get x equals what, 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 what? Uh-huh. 17.5 or 17 and one half. Make sure you plug back in and check, 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 check it out. That's called defraction. I knew that. Cool. What else do we have left? Inequalities. That's exciting. Write and graph inequalities. Okay. So we're at x. This would be x is less than, because it makes like an L, less than negative 4. Open circle at what? At negative 4. Think about what's less than it, negative 5. What's greater than it, negative 3. And all the numbers that are less than negative 4 are shaded to the left. To the left, to the left, to the left, to the left, to the left. Boom, that one's done. Open circle. Make sure you have an open circle there. You shade to the left, less than. This one, I'm going to skip the words part and just write the inequality. But they're saying to use the variable a here. So I'm going to put an a in the middle. So the inequality would be that we're between 3 and 6. And alligator mouse have to go in the same direction. It's open at 3 and it's closed at 6. So the number A is sitting between 3 and 6. Open at 3, closed at 6. 
and we're done. Voila! Salt and grass, and then what else do we have left? What else? Yeah, salt and grass. Okay. Coolio. So inequalities here, because they're not equal to, they work very much the same, except if we multiply or divide by a negative, we have to flip the sign. Here we go. Build house, build fence, clean yard, clean yard. I'm going to add three. Copy, paste, copy, paste. If I haven't used it, drag it down, drag it down. All right. Now, we're solving for x. So we are going to multiply nice and high, copy, paste, copy, paste by 2. So that gives us x is greater than or equal to 2. 2, 2, 2, 2. So here's 2. Close circle. Because it's this cell right there. This would be 1. This would be 3. All the numbers that are greater than or equal to 2, shading to the what? To the right, to the right, to the right, to the right. Boom. Build house, build fence, clean yard, clean yard. Minus 9, copy, paste, copy, paste. We get 5, less than. Drag it down, drag it down. Divide both sides by negative 5. Oh, wait. We just divided by a negative on what? On both sides. When that happens in math, we have to do what? We have to flip the sign. Flip the sign when you divide by a negative to both sides. So this becomes negative 1. Negative 1 is greater than x. Now that's stressful for me, so I like to flip everything and get the variable on the left. So I flip, flip, flip the whole thing. So at negative 1, there's an open circle. Something smaller is negative 3. Something bigger is 0. So we're talking about all the values that are less than negative 1. We shade to the left, to the left, to the left, to the left, to the left. All right. Now, solving these last ones, two-step equations, and we're out. So we're already at 32 minutes, but it's the entire unit that we're reviewing. So we're going to subtract 5.95, copy, paste, copy, paste. If I haven't used it, drag it down, drag it down. On the right-hand side, I'm definitely using my calculator on that. Negative 17.7. All right, next step is to divide by negative 2.75. Copy, paste, copy, paste. And we just check, check, check it out. We just divided by a negative. Right here, right here, right here, right here. See it, see it, see it? When that happens, we flip the sign, but it has to be on both sides that we divide by negative. Plus x equals 6. Oh, that looks nice. It doesn't say we have to graph. That's exciting. Positive 6. x less than positive 6. And the final, final problem of the day, getting us ready for this unit test on rational numbers. Anything that's a fraction, decimal, improper fraction, mixed number, and so on. That's what we're doing. We're solving, we're order of operations, we're adding them. 4 minus 10 is negative 6. Tug of war that. Tug of war that. Divide both sides by 2. Pause. Did I divide both sides by a negative? No. There's a negative in the problem, but I did not divide both sides by negative. So we get x greater than negative 3. I believe that we will win. I believe that we're done. Yay! So that is your review on every single thing we did in the rational number unit. Get ready for your test. Make sure you feel good about this. Have a glorious night.